This research isn't new. The Portuguese team, led by Dr. Carlos Lima, reported small improvements for patients who had olfactory stem cells transplanted into the injured spinal cord. Some reported activity in muscle groups previously dormant. Others were able to better control bowel and bladder function. What you don't hear about with this and other experimental treatments are those for whom it made no difference, or worse, left them in considerable pain. While the Portugal clinic offers a treatment, the New Zealanders are carrying out a clinical trial with a control group and documented results. We hope that that kind of filling in with neuroscience uh, between nothing and clinical change will actually start to tell us a whole lot more of the story about human neurological recovery, which even if it's a story we don't fully know for another 20 years or 30 years or however long it takes, uh, carries hope for a person, you know, who's paralysed and who needs to feel that something is being done. Twelve people will be selected for the trial. Six will get the surgery and an intensive physiotherapy program. The other six will get only the physiotherapy treatment. In past stem cell trials, detractors have suggested it may have been the physiotherapy element alone that caused a change in function. To dispel or prove this theory, in these trials, both the group receiving the stem cells and a control group that don't will have to undergo a rigorous physiotherapy regime. The reasoning is that you want to see real changes dependent on the surgery, not changes brought about by an increased optimism or involvement or a physiotherapy regime or some other kind of rehabilitation program that's aimed at an individual of the type concerned. When we visited Dr Carlos and his team in Portugal, we learned that physiotherapy is a huge part of the rehabilitation process, as it is with these trials. What I'm wondering is how they're going to motivate the 12 Kiwi participants to keep up with the strict physio regime for two years. I spent a year of my life doing intensive physio. I know how hard it is. In this trial, they'll be expected to do two hours of physio six days a week for two years. One of the other important questions of the, of the research is, one is, is, is obviously the effects of the surgery, but the other is looking at whether we can maintain people in an optimal physical activity program for two years and um, people will be a part of the eligibility criteria of coming into the study is um, making sure they do have high levels of motivation to begin with. It'll be a tough assignment for the control group, the ones who don't get the surgery. No one chooses which group they're in. The issue for a trial where you have controls is that Everyone is part of a team. Now, in a rugby team or a netball team, you don't have everyone all scoring the tries and all scoring the goals. That's not the way it, things happen. Uh, but you need the whole team there to actually ever get a chance of scoring one goal uh, or, or more. So it's an integrated process. Everyone's participating. And in the long term, everyone will benefit from better knowledge. There'll be strict criteria about who gets onto the trial. You must be under 35. It must be a complete spinal injury and have happened between two and seven years ago. Open only to paraplegics, not quadriplegics. We're going for thoracics initially. That is from the base, just below the base of the neck down to the uh, uh, mid to lower thoracic area because the surgery there, if a technical problem cropped up, uh, would not lead to more significant problems for the person. Issues of um, uh, age of the individuals. Uh, yes, we're taking people up to age 35 only, um, from 18 to 35, and that's purely because the olfactory tissue in the upper nose uh, becomes uh, less accessible in older individuals. And not everyone thinks we're ready to do this kind of trial. Dr Angelo Anthony of the Burwood Spinal Unit says the research team is on the right track, but believes the safety of the procedure hasn't been proven. Can we give them the assurance that uh, they're going to be all right? Because we don't know what the long-term effects of uh, such treatments are going to be. There's no talk of a cure, 
but the Otago scientists do expect small gains to be made. Gains that could make a real difference to the lives of New Zealanders with spinal cord injury. We're not looking for um, that the person will be able to walk out of the trial. It's very early stages in this type of um, surgery. If anything, there might be um, some slight improvement in sensation, which we can um, measure with, with sensory testing modalities. Um, there may be a slight improvement in innovation to muscles. So particularly around the hip joint, the muscles might be able to move a, a bit more. Um, how that will translate into function, um, it might mean those people might be able to stand a bit better. And it's like building a television. You start off from a crystal set, but eventually you're going to get to plasma TV, but you're not going to do it unless you keep working with what you've got. The Otago team will shortly start a nationwide call out for participants to come forward. And we'll be keeping a close eye on their progress. In the meantime, many of us are getting on and enjoying life. I reckon you've got to be happy with where you're at.